Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break. So we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them, and we're continuing on in this week just looking at uh, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, and uh, the last few verses as Paul writes about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the importance of that for us who are in Christ. And so this morning we'll be looking at verses 56 and 57 of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day, and we just rejoice in it. And Lord, though, though it is uh, kind of a miserable day weather-wise, we uh, take great joy and delight in your light and in being present with you and communing with you and hearing your still small voice still small voice speaking a word of encouragement to us for this day and so god we pray that as we meditate on your holy scriptures lord that you will uh, give us a new insight a new word of encouragement for this day we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of jesus christ in whose precious name we pray amen so 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 56 and 57. For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. The sting that Paul refers to is result which results in death is sin. Sin is the thing, the one thing that separates us from God. It is indeed the reason why Jesus came in the first place, why Jesus stepped down off his his uh, throne at the right hand of God to be born of the Virgin Mary, to dwell among us, to minister to us, and indeed to die for us on the cross at Calvary, to pay our sin debt in full. Our sin debt caused a chasm that separated us from God. And the only way that that sin debt could be paid was through the shed blood of the perfect Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And that is the reason why he came. He came to seek out and to save the lost. Those who were living under the bondage of sin. And he accomplished that on the cross at Calvary. He de defeated sin and death once for all. Now we know that sin and evil and death still exist in our world today. Because the final fulfillment of that defeat will not take place until he returns. And so we claim the victory, though we haven't uh, received the prize, if you will, yet. The prize is, the, is when Jesus returns and gathers all of the redeemed, all of the church, all of those who are in Christ to himself. But sin is the sting. The sting that results in death. Paul says it in... Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through his Son, Jesus Christ. Sin, the wages of sin is death. And when you are in Christ... When you are born again into the new life that Christ has died for you to have, sin no longer 
has its hold on you. It doesn't mean that you won't sin. As Paul says also in chapter 3 of Romans, for we all sin and fall short of God's glorious standard. The reality of this time in which we live is sin is still present. In chapter 7 of Romans, Paul talks about this, this battle within him. This battle between wanting to do what is pleasing to God, what is in keeping with Christ's example, but this other desire within him, this sin desire within him, to do what pleases himself. For sin is the sting that results in death. We know when we are sinning because we feel the prick of Holy Spirit, the, the, the conviction of Holy Spirit that tells us we are not doing something that is pleasing and acceptable to God, or saying something that is, that is pleasing and acceptable to God. And we feel that sting. Sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives, it, gives sin its power. That's an interesting comment for Paul to make. The law gives sin its power. You see, what he's saying is that it's impossible for us to live by all of the statutes of the law that, that have been laid out by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders. Some 635 statutes. Even they couldn't uphold all of them is why Jesus called them hypocrites because they were demanding a level of, of obedience to the law of the people that they weren't willing or able to uphold themselves. And if you are not able to live according to the law, then you are a sinner. Jesus says, I come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. In other words, in him, all of the requirements, all of the statutes, all of the, the, the regulations of the law are fulfilled. When we are in Christ, we, we are the fulfillment, we, we uh, receive the fulfillment of the law. And sin no longer has its hold on us. See what Paul's saying here? That the law gives sin its power, but when we are in Christ, that power is removed. That power is defeated. That power is taken away. Jesus is victorious over the power of the law and sin. So when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, sin no longer has power over us. And so Paul then says, thank God, exclamation mark, but thank God, and we need to thank God each and every day for the victory won for us on our behalf by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That through him, through his sacrifice on the cross, sin no longer has power over us. He says he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it is only through Jesus that we have victory 
over sin. That we have power in Him rather than allowing sin to have power over us. See, when we have Christ abiding in us, we have access, ready access to the power of Holy Spirit. And the power of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit far exceeds the power of sin and Satan and his helpers. And so when you feel tempted, friends, claim that power. Don't don't succumb to the temptation that Satan is placing before you. Say, no. I claim the power of Jesus Christ. Scripture says, all you need to do is speak the name of Jesus Christ and Satan will flee. Claim his power. Don't allow power of sin to take control of your life. Claim the power of Jesus Christ and the victory that he accomplished on the cross for you and for me. Claim that power. Speak that name. And you will discover as you do that and as you do it time and time and time again that you will be victorious over the temptation of sin. And you will be victorious in Christ. And so give him all the glory and the praise. Because he's the one who ultimately has won the victory for you. And it is his power that enables you to face the challenges and the struggles and the difficulties and the temptations this day. Seek him with your whole heart, friends, and know his power, his grace, and his love in your life this day. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you loved us so much that you we're willing to spare your one and only Son for us. We thank you, O God, that you offered us the free gift of eternal life through the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. That you did not spare even your only Son so that we may have eternal life in and through you. And Jesus, we thank you that you are willing to step down off your throne at the right hand of the Father, to dwell among us, to set the example for us, to model a life of grace, a life of compassion and kindness, of love. And that you demonstrated that love by laying your life down for ours paying our sin debt in full. And so we thank you and we praise you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to help us this day to seek the power from above. Seek the power of Christ which abides in us to help us to meet the challenges of this day, to, to thwart the Attempts by Satan to tempt us to, to, to follow him rather than follow Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray that you will lead us this day, that you'll make your face shine before us, that you will go before us and behind us, place your hedge of protection around us, and lead us in the way everlasting, giving us opportunities to witness to your saving grace through the words we speak and the things we do. Lord, we love you and we need you. And we surrender ourselves to you this day in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's word. I 
Hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. So friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.